Good afternoon and welcome to this hearing of the Committee on Governmental Operations. Today we will be holding a second hearing and a vote on proposed introduction number 899A, sponsored by Council Member Keith Powers in relation to permitting the use of campaign funds for certain child care expenses. This bill was previously heard in a joint hearing with the Committee on, on Women in June of this year. Whenever a person runs for elected office, there is a tremendous demand for their time. They are expected to raise funds, to organize their campaign, to knock on doors, to shake hands at train stops, and to speak to voters at community meetings. But if a candidate has a young child at home, and if they can't afford to pay for child care to give their campaign the, the time it needs, then he either then either the campaign will suffer or they simply won't run for office. This bill removes that difficult choice and eases the way for parents to run for office. Proposed intro 899A will permit campaign funds but not public money to be used for child care services for children under 13 years of age when the, the need for such child care services will not ex uh, exist but for the campaign. Such funds could be spent in the year of election or the year immediately preceding the year of election. Since introduction, the bill has been amended in several ways. It now provides greater specificity on when such expenditures can be made. It also provides an extension from the expenditure limit for the first 20000 uh, dollars spent on child care in the election year. It now requires information to be provided to candidates on how to make such expenditures. In addition, although this has been already been the practice of the Campaign Finance Board, it makes clear the candidates who obtain child care without using campaign funds should not be considered as receiving an in-kind contribution. I would like to thank the sponsor of this bill and member of, of the, this committee, Council Member Keith Powers, for advancing this issue. I would also like to thank our committee staff, Council Brad Reed, Policy Analyst Elizabeth Cronk, Finance Analyst Zachary Harris, Deputy Director uh, Rachel Coldero, and Council to the Speaker Rob Newman. Uh, new, <laughs> new men, as well as my own legislative uh, director, Claire Michael Vane, for all their hard work. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over uh, to the sponsor of this wonderful bill. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Cabrera. Um, I'm excited to be here to today to vote on intro 899A, a bill I introduced with Majority Leader Lori Cumbo to allow candidates to use campaign funds to cover certain child care expenses. It follows a landmark unanimous ruling from the Federal Election Commission to allow congressional candidate Luba Gretchen Shirley to use campaign uh, funds for child care expenses, as well as a recent decision from the New York State Board of Elections to allow for the same on the state level. The aim of this bill is to eliminate some of the financial barriers that hold people, especially women, back from running for office in New York City. A 2013 Pew Research Center survey found that 42% of working mothers have to reduce their working hours to care for a child or other family member, while only 28% of working fathers do the same. Furthermore, in over half of New York households, the woman isn't the breadwinner. I will note, though, that we also have many men in this body who are also caretakers and fathers. I noticed Councilmember Kalos, who's here, Councilmember Levin, Reynoso, and many others who um, have to find the balance between being an elected official, uh, running for office, and uh, being a, a, a caretaker. Um, we have to realize that for many New Yorkers, child care costs may be a necessary expense in a campaign, and this particular ex expense can be significant enough to discourage candidates, particularly female candidates, from running for office. This becomes even more important when we talk about the conversation around representation in the city council with only 11 women in the, bo in the body today. Um, this bill has gained support from Planned Parenthood NYC, She Will Rise, 21 and 21, Now NYC, and any more. In passing, I believe we can better serve parents, especially women, as they fight to serve in New York City. 
And just from some personal experience, having gone through this last year, I can tell you, you have to make a sacrifice to do this one way or the other, whether it is quitting your job, whether it is putting yourself out there, night meetings, weekend events, and to be able to offset some of the burden for people who decide that public service is something they want to pursue, I think is a great, is a great, uh, is a great piece of legislation and a great task uh, for us to take up here in the city council. Um, I just want to also note, uh, I wanted to thank the staff here for working on this bill and helping to put it into final form. It took a lot of back and forth and negotiations. I also want to just recognize uh, one of the members of this committee, uh, Councilmember Calvin Yeager, who also worked with us and raised, I think, points, and, and Councilmember Kalos, that we helped address, I think, in the final version to make it a better bill at the end. Um, and lastly, while I am available for babysitting, I cannot make outside income, so I'll do it. For you, Ben Kalos, I'll maybe sit when you need me to. Thank you to the, the committee for taking this up. Thank you to the chairman. Well, thank you so much. And I uh, will now ask the clerk to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on governmental operations, introduction 899A, Chair Cabrera. Aye. Kalos. Uh, thank you for the offer of babysitting. <laughs> I, I will vote on it regardless. I know you've been a great uncle. Uh, so uh, anyone would be lucky as a, a new parent who, who is dealing with uh, uh, the simple reality that if child care falls through, that's that, and your calendar is, is, is canceled, uh, this will be very helpful as somebody who has done my best to recruit women of color to run for the city council because we are underrepresented by women and, and parents in general. I think that this goes a long way towards making sure that we really open up government uh, to parents. Uh, I proudly vote aye. Maizel. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Perkins. Yes. Powers. Yes. Yeager. Mr. Chairman, may I be excused to briefly explain my vote? Thank you. Um, I, I will be voting for this bill proudly. Uh, I think this, this is a wise idea by uh, Councilman Powers and um, I emphasize council man. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a male member of this body who sponsored this bill and was able to put together a coalition of 26 of his colleagues to co-sponsor the bill. Uh, and it appear appears to pass unanimously through this committee today. Um, I, I want to just note a few things for the record uh, because I think it's important. Um, you know, as the chairman and uh, as the sponsor of the bill indicated, this is not about using public funds. Um, no government funds can be used for these expenditures, and that's very important to the health of the robust campaign finance program that we have in the city. Campaign finance funds that are paid for by the taxpayers are to be used for campaign expenses. These funds can only be the privately raised funds, which are transparently raised by candidates who the, are soliciting funds in their community. People know who they are. More importantly to me, I think, is as I analyzed the bill uh, when it was first introduced and over the last several weeks, this is not a bill that assists those of us who hold public office, um, really, because we have jobs, and if we should need childcare right now, it's in relation to the job that we hold, not to our roles as candidates, either in the past or in the future. Really, this is about helping people who want to come to this body and to other offices, um, whether to run against us or to run for other offices uh, in the city. Um, I think it's a wise bill. I think it's fair. Um, I, my reservation, and I will say it uh, so that if it ever happens, I get to say, I told you so. My reservation is that uh, in some respects, this does leave uh, um, the approval of the child care expenses to the whims of the Campaign Finance Board. And I'm concerned by that simply because I think that it's a factual question whether or not a candidate has a child under 13 and is in need of child care and but for uh, that candidate's position as a candidate, would he or she need the child care? It's factual. It shouldn't require the approval of the Campaign Finance Board as uh, we amend Section 3702 of the Administrative Code, Subdivision 23. However, having said that, on balance, it's a good bill. It's a smart bill. As my colleagues have indicated, it will, I hope, uh, enable more women who are who are beginning their their, their, their families to look at public office as a place where they can go, and I'm proud to support it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. By a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Uh, item is adopted. So with that, we conclude today's hearing and vote. Beautiful.
Also, since I go, not back. <laughs>